What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we've got one more video, I think. I think one more video that we're going to be having a look at before the Rise of the Red Skull box officially releases. I'm a little bit hyped. I assume you're a little bit hyped. And now, don't get me wrong, we'll be doing reviews of all the heroes and scenarios and all of that. Of course we are. Come on, let's not be silly. But before it launches... Given that we had a look at spider Woman's Nemesis the other day, it seems a little bit rude not to look at Hawkeye's Nemesis today. So let's take a look at Crossfire. Now on the face of it, Crossfire's stats are not terribly impressive. Scheme of 1, no. Attack of 2, alright, not great, but alright. And health of 4, again, it's alright, it's not great. It will do. We're not talking some phenomenal minion stats-wise. But he's got Quick Strike and the attacks gain piercing. Now, Quick Strike says that you attack as soon as it comes out. So, generally speaking, when you're dealing encounter cards, if a minion is dealt as an encounter card, it engages with you, but it does not activate. We essentially have to wait until the next villain phase for the minion to activate and have a go at you. Well, that's not the case with a minion that's got Quick Strike. Where a minion has Quick Strike, they activate and attack you as soon as it comes out. To use the words of the rules reference, after this enemy engages a player, it immediately attacks that player if they are in hero form. Now, obviously, if you are not in hero form, if you're in older ego form, you'll get away with it. But come on, that is um not ideal, shall we say, ladies and gentlemen. This is, that, that's pretty harsh. And it's attacks game piercing. Now, generally speaking, you've got a tough counter, you get attacked, the tough counter goes away, but you don't actually take any damage. The problem with piercing is that it ignores that tough counter and will just do a bunch of damage anyway. So, okay, the stats here are not particularly amazing, but you add in the quick strike and the piercing... And things change pretty gosh darn quickly. Again, I should give you the exact wording of piercing. We can see it on the Black Knight card we looked at the other day. Discard any tough status cards from the target before dealing damage. So it doesn't just ignore the tough marker, though it does. It actually removes it and then does damage. So you lose the tough counter and take the damage anyway. So no, it's not particularly great stats wise. But if you add in the quick strike and the piercing, then all of a sudden crossfire becomes actually kind of harsh. I mean, you can come out and do two damage immediately, even if you've got a tough marker on or a tough status card. That is, there are some games where that's going to be brutal. Now, Mark for Death we had actually seen before. That was one of the content creator reveals. But we'll mention it quickly here while we're talking through the Hawkeye Nemesis set. So what we've got here is the Clint Barton player searches her hand, deck, discard pile and play area for Mockingbird and places her face up beneath this card. When the stage is defeated, you return Mockingbird to her owner's hand. Now, it gives an acceleration token to the main scheme, so you're putting two threat on per turn rather than one, which is mean. And the five threat on a side scheme is actually kind of high. But I told you this before, I think there are actually advantages to Marked for Death. Now remember there is a new Mockingbird coming in Rise of the Red Skull. But there is also the basic Mockingbird. Mockingbird basically in Rise of the Red Skull comes in as one of Hawkeye's specific allies. Whereas in the core set, Mockingbird actually came along as a basic ally that could be put into any deck. And essentially... If Mockingbird's in play, then yeah, this is horrible, because it puts Mockingbird underneath the side scheme, and then when you get her back, you've got to pay to play her. But if she's in your deck or discard pile, then you put her under the side scheme, then you defeat the side scheme, and she comes into play, and you've actually got Mockingbird coming into play more easily than you would otherwise. And I love Mockingbird in Rise of the Red Skull. Two fort for one damage is good. Two attack for one damage is good. Three health, three cost is fine. But when the villain initiates an attack against you, you can spend one resource of any type, 
prevent all of that damage and put Mockingbird back into your hand, ready to play her again. So you fought for two or attack for two twice, then you use her for one cost to basically block any damage coming in, and then you just play her again. Now, to be fair, because she's going to keep pinging into your hand in the play area, it is going to get more awkward because she is going to be put under the side scheme from play more often. But I still think if she's not in play, this could actually be a big advantage. If she is in play, kind of annoying. Now, Crossfire does come in with his own rifle here. It is an attachment. And when it comes out, you attach it to Crossfire if Crossfire is in play. Otherwise, you attach it to the villain. Now it gives plus two attack, so that puts Crossfire up to four attack, or just adds two to the villain. And when you attack, you gain ranged. Ranged ignores retaliate. So retaliate, generally, you attack, and then the character with retaliate does a damage back. Either you attack and they retaliate, or they attack and you retaliate. But if you've got ranged, I believe we saw this for the first time on Hawkeye's Bow. Hawkeye's Bow gives all of your arrows... The ranged keyword, and I believe that's the first time we saw it. Ranged attacks ignore retaliate. So now, let's say you get the bow onto crossfire here. What we've got is four attack, and piercing, and ranged. So tough is something you would use to try and go against them, but that doesn't work. And retaliate is something you try and use against them, but that doesn't work. And four attack on a minion actually is pretty gosh darn high. And this, um, yeah... This adds up. While we're talking piercing, I did forget to mention earlier, when we're looking at Crossfire, if he comes out as a boost icon when the villain is attacking, you do actually give the villain's attack piercing, so the villain can gain piercing just by seeing this as a boost icon. That's kind of nuts. But going back to the rifle, you do have an option to exhaust your hero and spend any resource to discard Crossfire's rifle, and I think a lot of the time you're probably going to have to do that. Having a four attack minion with piercing and range does seem to be a little bit harsh. But then again, paying a resource and exhausting your hero isn't exactly nothing. That's going to get kind of annoying. So yeah, fine. Crossfire on the face of it doesn't have particularly good stats. But time you add in the rifle, it starts getting kind of harsh. And the last two cards are Sniper Shot. Two copies of this. And it is a treachery card. And when it's revealed, you place three threats on the main scheme. If you're in alter ego mode. And deal three damage to your hero when you're in hero mode. And this is the kind of thing that can lose you the game. Like when you're against Rhino, you look at him and you go, well, he's got high attack. But realistically... It's not that likely he's going to be able to do, say, 9 damage. Rhino looks big and bad and all of that, but I think 9 damage is outside the realms of feasibility. But then Rhino flips one of those cards that has 3 boost icons. So Rhino goes from 3 to 6, and you take 6, but you go, well, I've still got 3 health left, it's going to be okay. And then this flips and does 3 damage, and all of a sudden Rhino's done 9 damage in a single turn. And there's plenty of cards out there that have got the free boost icons. Now, if you look at somebody like Black Widow, for instance, she's only got nine hit points. So this opens the door for, hey, my boost card's got free boost icons. Hey, I flipped this treachery card. And now all of a sudden, just goes down. Oh. Yep. That's kind of mean. Actually, while we're here, you know who else has got nine hit points? Hawkeye. Arguably a better example to use off the bat. Although I do kind of love that Hawkeye and Black Widow got the same number of hit points. That seems kind of cute and lovely and appropriate. So yeah, this can take down a third of your health in one go. If you're against a villain that can do a fair amount of damage and they flick some decent boost icons and this is a treachery, that is going to be the kind of thing that loses you the game right there and then. You have been warned. Overall, I do think this is a little bit harsher than Spider-Woman's Nemesis that was largely underwhelming. Although having said that, if we actually look just quickly again at Spider-Woman's Nemesis set, we do actually see that her villain, her Nemesis Viper, actually comes in with free boost icons rather than the special one that just gives you piercing.
Hawkeye's side scheme does actually have three boost icons rather than two. So it kind of wins in that regard. But Sniper Shot has got one boost icon. Whereas we could look at Hail Hydra and that's got two. We could look at Crossfire's Rifle which comes in with two boost icons. And we could compare it to Hydra Regular that comes in with two. So there are nominally a couple more of these over in... Over in Spider-Woman's Nemesis set, though she doesn't have the special piercing boost icon, so... I don't know. This seems harsher than that. And Crossfire, this is the kind of villain that can do a lot of damage if you're not ready. Almost like you're sitting there minding your own business and it's sniping you from across the map. Oh, look. It's thematically appropriate. Who could have expected that from Marvel Champions? For now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think about this, so let me know in the comment section. Get us, be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy. That's where we talk Marvel Champions and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, all kinds of fun stuff. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.